Hi, good evening everybody. I'm Archana from Grassum Industry and thank you for joining us today on this wonderful evening. Sustainability. Sustainability has never been a more pressing issue across industries and it's hugely important for us to be aware of the developments in our field on the same and to actively strive towards sustainable production. On that note, it's a great pleasure for me to have our speakers of the day talk to us about Excel, the third generation sustainable cellulosic fiber. Our speakers have 40 plus years of experience between them in the field of textile manufacturing and they've been an integral part of Birla Cellulose's innovation journeys. So, but before that, please join me in welcoming our Global Head Customer Technical Services, our Vice President, Dr. Debashish Niyogi, and over to you, Mr. Niyogi, to introduce our speakers of the day. Thank you very much, Archana, and a very, very good afternoon to all the all our fraternity members from textile. I'm seeing here from not only from India. Uh, from Bangladesh, from Indonesia. A lot of uh, participations are there. Uh, today we are organizing this seminar on uh, this third generation of man-made cellulose fiber. That is Birla Excel. This particular program is uh, chalked out after gazing the after gauging the interest responses from various stakeholders in the industry we are happy to wish you a very warm welcome in this program today going forward we would like to know about birla excel fiber which is a third generation man-made fiber and it is a cellulosic fiber and to top of it it is sustainable fiber from sustainability point of view this is one of the top notch most talked fiber and you know how the word buzzword sustainability is important today right from spinners policy makers entire textile value chain garmenters retailers till consumers how much they are interested to embrace sustainability in their lifestyle so it is very important to understand and to know about build excel fiber it is the newest in its category in our various novel offering to textile fraternity and uh, we are very happy to have with us today two very eminent experts in this field. We have divided this session into two very distinct way. One is the nuances of manufacturing of Birla Excel fiber. And going forward, there will be another session, small session. We have not kept this session pretty long on how to handle this fiber, especially in the weight processing. So today on the manufacturing front, morphology front, chemistry front, we would like to know about Birla Excel fiber from Dr. Parag Patil. Dr. Parag Patil is a highly learned and respected colleague of us, and he heads research and development vertical for Lyocell research for Birla Excel fiber. He is 
a graduate from the finest college in chemical technology in this country and the, in the world, that is UDC, University Department of Chemical Technology of Mumbai University. After this, he has earned his uh, PhD from University of Tennessee with the specialization of uh, polymer rheology. It is uh, really a matter of pride to have Dr. Patil with us. He is associated in this process on this journey of build a layer cell fiber, build a cell fiber right from its research stage. And you know this technology is all indigenous. It is not readily available. So you can say he's the mother. So without further uh, discussion, I would like to invite Dr. Parag Patil to take forward us through this interesting journey on what is Brilla Excel. Thank you. Hello, am I live yet? Yes, you are live. Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks, Devashish, uh, for that wonderful introduction. Uh, first of all, very warm uh, welcome to all our uh, uh, customers who have taken time out to attend this knowledge sharing session. We are very, very grateful to you for taking this time out. Uh, as Devashish mentioned, we will be talking about the third generation of cellulosic man made fiber, the Birla Excel. Uh, the generic name for this is Lyocell, as most of you would know, the generic name as per the BISPA. So what is so special about this Birla Excel? It's a third generation of cellulosic fiber after viscose, the first generation and the modal. And the key attribute is that the most important one is that it is manufactured using a process which is very environment friendly. It's a green process, it's a closed loop process, uh, and it basically minimizes the effluent, the chemical usage, and the discharges to the environment. The fiber is extracted from wood, and therefore it is a naturally biodegradable fiber, like viscose and modal also. Uh, the key thing is that the Excel has the highest dry and wet strength among all cellulosic fibers. And I'll spend a little bit time explaining later what gives this fiber, what structural features of this fiber give this unique property of very highest uh, dry and wet strength. Uh, because of this high strength, it has a very excellent dimensional stability. You can wash it by hand, by machine wash, dry clean, any way that you would like to use it. Uh, another feature which is related to its morphology is that the lyocell fiber has a very strong dye uptake and deep vibrant colors are easily possible, which gives a very superior color brilliance. It has a superior fabric bound, physical resistance is better than cotton, softness and comfort is superior to cotton. Overall, it's a very versatile extra, uh, fiber for textile application and very easy to process in the different value chains in yarn, fabric, and blades. Uh, I'll spend uh, some time explaining how this fiber is made. And uh, it's uh, what you see on the screen is a very simple schematic uh, which conceptually explains how the Pirla Excel fiber is made. And you basically have two key elements or ingredients, the pulp or cellulose, and the solvent, the organic solvent called as N-methyl morpholin N-oxide. In short, it is called as NMMO. In the first step, the pulp is mixed with NMMO to form a kind of a suspension or slurry in the pre-mixer. At this stage, there is a sufficient or significant amount of water in present, which basically prevents the pulp from completely dissolving in the NMMO solvent. That happens in the dissolution stage. So this slurry basically goes into an equipment in which two things happen. You evaporate the water by thermal and mechanical energy to bring the concentration of NMMO in the range in which the dissolution happens. And also there is a lot of shearing or mixing to homogeneously mix the cellulose into NMMO to form a nice homogeneous polymer, which can be then spun into very, very fine fibers. So after the dope is formed, we do the filtration to remove any particulate or ionic impurities which could come largely from the pulp. And after the filtration, 
it is sent to a spinning head. Now this is basically a, a let's say like a shower head with tens of thousands of holes in each spinneret, and hundreds of such spinnerets are there in a commercial manufacturing plant. But what happens in each spinneret basically happens all across. And what happens is that you extrude these polymer filaments to very very tiny holes, typically of the order of 80 micron to 120 micron, and these filaments are then stretched because of a difference in the speed at the extrusion point and at the stretching point. And all the stretch that the filament gets actually happens in a very tiny air gap. And that's the beauty of the process. In only 15 to 30 millimeter of the air gap, all the stretch that is required to achieve the final diameter of around 10 micron is achieved. And this is exactly what gives this fiber the kind of properties that you know we have talked about. Post stretching, the filaments enter into regeneration bath, and almost immediately upon entering the regeneration bath, the structure of the filament is frozen. What happens in the regeneration is the solvent basically comes out into the water, and it goes into a separate loop. The fibers which are regenerated are then cut into the various staple forms as per the customer requirement. And then they are subjected to after treatment, which is basically washing, bleaching, and application of soft finish, followed by the drying to achieve a final moisture of around 9 to 11%. And then the fibers are packed in the bale. Now, why is this process called closed loop? And you can see two loops here. One is that the dilute spin bath, which contains a dilute solution of NMMO, is first purified and then sent to a series of evaporators, which basically evaporate the water and send the concentrated NMMO back into the process. So all the NMMO that comes out in the regeneration is basically after evaporation sent back into the process. The second loop is the water that gets evaporated and we recover that by condensation that is actually used to wash the fibers. So in a way, there is a perpetual closed loop in which the both the solvent loop and the water loop is closed. And that's why the process is called a closed loop process. We are able to achieve uh, more than 99.6% recovery of the solvent, which means only 0.4% of the solvent is basically taken as fresh. The process does not use any hazardous chemicals, does not release any hazardous gases. And because of a very low water consumption requirement, it's an ideal candidate for a potentially zero liquid discharge process. The, the process has a lot of advantages, and some of these are uh, summarized in this chart here. So if you look at the land and plantation use, it gives a seven times more yield than cotton. Water consumption is 10 to 15 times lower than cotton. Uh, most of the pulp that is required to make this cellulose for this process comes from a very low grade land. Uh, and not a very high arable land like cotton, no pesticides and irrigation. And of course, we talked about the fiber manufacturing in the previous chart regarding uh, no use of hazardous chemicals. Uh, another important part is that the feed material, which is wood, is a renewable feed material. And there is no emission of gases and a very negligible discharge to the environment. So uh, this is basically talking about the philosophy of our group and our fiber business to have sustainability, not only in our manufacturing process, but all the way across the different value chains. And there are five pillars of our sustainability. Number one is the responsible sourcing. And we practice that by ensuring that all the good that we use in the manufacturing of our fibers, including Birla Excel, is 100% FSC certified. Uh, we also follow responsible manufacturing, which means no use of manufacturing restricted substances list or MRSL chemicals. Uh, the Vinla Excel process, as you have seen, is a closed loop process. Uh, then we follow a sustainable product and circular economy model in all our manufacturing practices. We also are in partnership with the key uh, organization who are championing the cause of sustainability, like ZDSC, uh, SAC, Textile Exchange, and Canopy. 
uh, on the front of social responsibility uh, our group and our business has been at the forefront to basically in the field of healthcare providing healthcare to millions of people and children education providing daily meals to almost 63000 students and also in the field of women empowerment uh, we have taken proactive steps uh, steps to ensure the social responsibility uh, talking a little bit about uh, responsible sourcing uh, as i mentioned the birla excel fibers are made from 100% controlled wood with complete tractability of from which forest the wood is coming and whether that forest is managing the uh, fsc certified practices we are very proud to inform that in 2020 aditi birla group is ranked number 1 in canopy hot button report and you can see this dark green shirt that we have achieved for ensuring sustainable forestry practices. Uh, we have FSC certified credits available. As I mentioned, we don't use any of these MRSL chemicals or chemicals having, you know, restricted under the reach uh, legislation in the manufacturing of the lighter. Safety, environment and ethics are requirement that we uh, basically ensure not only in our manufacturing, but also across all our value chain partners. Some of the collaborations uh, with the champions of sustainability uh, like Canopy, Changing Markets, Foundation, uh, Textile Exchange Commission, Sustainable and Apparel Coalition, ZDSC, and uh, World Business Council for Sustainable Development. We are contributing and partnering with all these uh, uh, all these uh, organizations on a proactive basis. So now coming back to the Excel fiber properties, what makes it so special? And this chart in a way summarizes or compares the Excel, Birla Excel or Lyocell fiber versus different grades of cellulosic fibers, cotton, viscose, and modal. And you can notice two things. One is that it has the highest dry and wet strength. And it also has a good elongation around 13 to 15%. Uh, it has a very high initial wet modulus. And this is important because it gives the fabrics made out of this fab, uh, Excel fiber, with like Excel fiber, a very good dimensional stability. Uh, and uh, also the ratio of the elong weight strength to dry strength is a very heavy, uh, very, uh, let's say, healthy one at point H4 compared to viscose and modal process. Of course, there is no such thing as a perfect product or a perfect fiber in this world. And Virla like Excel or Lyocell in general, uh, suffer from one drawback and that is fibrillation and we will talk a little bit about this fibrillation in a couple of slides how it why it occurs and what can be done and uh, my colleague Somes will specifically talk about how to take care of this part in the downstream processes uh, just to give you a picture of uh, how these fibers look like when you observe them under the microscope you can very easily identify just by a simple cross-section cut, observing under a scanning electron microscope or even optical microscope, whether the fiber is viscose, modal, or lysine. You see that the viscose is having a cauliflower-shaped uh, uh, cross-section with lot of this vertical serration. Modal is uh, modal is basically a bean-shaped, and Virla XL or Lysel is basically very very circular. With a very smooth surface, as you can see over here. Now, this uh, picture shows some of uh, very interesting, let's say, high resolution scanning electron microscopy pictures of Lysel and viscose. And it tells you one story, and that is if you look at the Lysel uh, at very high magnification, you can see clusters of very highly oriented tiny fibrils. And this is basically the thing that gives the lyocell the unique set of properties. And you can, if you go to the next chart, uh, basically here we are comparing the lyocell and viscose fiber microstructure. And the question is often asked why lyocell has this high strength versus viscose or modal. And there are two, three reasons why it happens. First is the degree of polymerization. And degree of polymerization is basically nothing but the number of cellulose molecule chains or number of cellulose molecules in a given cellulose chain. 
In viscose, this number is around 250 to 300. In lyocell, these chains are larger and around 550 to 600. Second aspect is the crystallinity. What is crystallinity? In this picture here, you can see uh, how the viscose fiber microstructure looks and how the lyocell microstructure looks. So you have these parallel bars that you see. These are basically nothing but cellulose chains arranged in a very tight order, almost as a crystal. And the percentage of such crystal in lyocell is much higher versus in viscose. So in lyocell, it is 60 to 65%. Whereas in the case of viscose, it is around 35 to 40%. Not only are these percentages very high, but you see that the orientation of these crystals is much higher in the case of lysel versus in the case of viscose. Uh, even the amorphous parts, which are shown as uh, which are shown as these uh, random coil structures, even those are a little bit more oriented in the case of lysel than in the viscose. So higher degree of polymerization, a higher crystallinity, and a higher orientation of molecular chains all contribute to a higher tenacity of lysel fibers. Another interesting factor or facet of lysel fiber is its unique moisture absorption properties. And in the previous picture, maybe I'll just go back for a reference. You have seen that the lysel is basically made out of very, very, very tiny finer uh, fibrils uh, clustered together. And what it does is that whenever the moisture comes at the surface of lyocell, it will immediately be taken out and distributed through these capillaries all across the lyocell fiber cross section. What it does, it, it gives a very uniform moisture absorption across the fiber cross section, and thus it enhances the wearing comfort of the fabric that is made out of uh, the lysel fiber. Now coming to the, uh, the issue of fibrillation that we talked about, what is fibrillation? Basically, these are the micrographs of uh, the let's say, fabric uh, made out of lysel and viscose. In the case of viscose, you see that the surface is basically very clean. In the case of lysel, we see these tiny, tiny fibrils which are coming out of each uh, fiber and then basically uh, create a kind of a web on the surface of the fabric. This happens when the fibers are subjected to abrasion in wet condition, which gives an undesirable appearance to the fabric. And again, this happens because of the process by which it is manufactured, wherein the entire stretch to achieve the required orientation is given in a very, very small air gap which results in this very highly oriented and crystalline structure. Uh, the most common way to address the uh, fibrillation is using a crossing cut, either at the fabric stage or at the, uh, either at the fiber stage or at the fabric stage. And crosslinker basically is nothing but a molecule which can tie two or more fiber chains which are adjacent to each other through a chemical bond. And what you do is you weight the fiber so you swell the fibrils and then you deposit a crosslinker inside those fibrils and you give it a high temperature to form that chemical reaction by which this bonding will occur. Uh, we'll spend a couple of minutes on what does it all mean to the value chain. We talked about high strength. We talked about uniform moisture absorption. Uh, some of that translates into very unique dye pickup properties. And this uh, chart here shows that the lysel fiber or Villa XL has the highest dye pickup among all cellulosic fibers, which gives it a potential to achieve very, very deep shades. In the bottom here, you can see uh, fabrics made out of cotton, XL, and polyester. And here we are measuring the drape coefficient or the fluidity of the fabric. And the lower the value, the more fluid is the fabric. And you can see versus cotton, which is around 27%, Excel, Virla Excel is around 13.8%, almost half. So it has a very nice drape. It falls very nicely. And therefore, it's a, it's a very good fiber to make fabric or garments which have very good drape and fluidity. And the drape and fluidity is uh, comparable or even better than the polyester fiber. Uh, what are some of the other advantages to the value chain? 
being the strongest cellulosic fibers with highest dry and wet strength it is uh, the most durable and long life fiber the garment which are made out of these have very good dimensional stability uh, another important aspect is its uh, softness so compared to the cotton the fabrics or garments made out of live cell with live cell are very soft they are very uh, let's say supple and uh, flexible and because of the unique moisture absorption they are very cool to the skin if you look at in terms of downstream processing the processing is very very similar in terms of efficiency loss in weaving and knitting uh, we don't require any mercerization or bleaching uh, as in the case of cotton so there is uh, potentially less use of dye and chemical uh, very little shrinkage the process shrinkage loss is similar to cotton the wash and wear characteristics uh, are also good and you can use it in the various value added process like bio wash heat skin garment wash calendaring laser printing laminating and coating some of the potential application for lyocell uh, home textile and bed linen are the most prominent ones it's also used in denim ladies wear shirting suiting prints and so on and the list is now growing as the lyocell is basically expanding its uh, foothold in the textile market just some of the possible blends with the birla excel you can use it as 100% for ladies top shirts with print and plain you can mix it with linen you can mix it with cotton you can mix it with viscose in different counts and depending upon the count and blend you can use it for denim trousers men shirts ladies top multifunctional product uh, for home textiles and denims and so on and so forth so finally uh, just to summarize Birla Excel is the third generation fiber from pulp and fiber business of Aditya Birla Group. It, it combines the best of all different fibers. It is soft as silk, silk. It is strong as polyester, cool as linen, and it is as absorbent as cotton. And uh, once again, to summarize its advantages, uh, it's a third generation fiber made from the state of the art technology, close loop process, very high solvent recovery, lowest water consumption. no gaseous emission minimum solid and you know waste generation and to conclude i would like to say that because of its superior performance characteristics and the growing thrust of fashion industry on sustainability uh, the lyocell fiber or birla excel fiber is an important choice for the future of the global textile value chain it is the most sustainable cellulosic fiber that is available today uh, with this i would like to conclude my part of the talk and maybe now somit will talk about wet processing uh, maybe over to you devashis to talk about or maybe introduce somit thank you dr patil uh it is uh, really nice to see across the globe there is participants and uh, attendees uh, to this uh, very valuable uh, time we are spending right now and uh, plethora of questions are coming which i am publishing uh, in our chat box you can have a look at this uh, <clears throat> now we have uh, mr uh, shomesh bhomik as our next speaker shomesh uh, Uh, what should i say uh, he is an encyclopedia as long as processing with processing is concerned to me and uh, shomesh has uh, a very unique kind of expertise you know uh, <clears throat> he is an post graduate from one of the most coveted academic institution in india that is iit delhi uh, post that uh, he has moved to university of stuttgart uh, germany Uh, and uh, published his master's thesis shomesh has extensively worked in uh, wet processing uh, for uh, various very important and very renowned brands garmenters and wet processors in india as well as uh, abroad also shomesh has taught professionally he has taught 
He was a faculty member at another uh, college in India, technical college, and it is exclusively for textiles. That is Textile Institute of Technology at Vivani, TIT Vivani. Shomesh was a faculty member there for five years. And currently <clears throat> he is working in the capacity of uh, his operation head, vice president at our Technology Research Application Development Center. Top of it, Shomesh has, uh, I believe, 15 papers in International Journal, technical papers in International Journal. And for Shomesh, uh, there are uh, very interesting questions are also awaiting. Um, you can have a look at it, this before you start, so that in your in your speech you can uh, adjust some of the responses. And post this, we will take all the question and answers. Uh, after so much uh, uh, speech and then we will also take Parag's help in answering those questions. Shomesh can also join. Meantime, uh, it's over to Shomesh. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, thank you Devasis and I'm very much thank you to Parag also. He has already been completed the toughest part of the presentation that what is the fiber actually. How does it look like? How does it manufacture? What is the properties? Be a textile person. We always uh, ask people or tell people if you know the properties of fiber, you know everything. You know how to spin, how to weave and uh, how to process and what property also you will get out of it. So it's a great pleasure for me to be here with uh, all of you and uh, heartiest welcome to all the participants, colleagues, our business partners, across uh, the India and outside the India. For some it is a good afternoon for some of you. Maybe the good evening. Maybe the good night also. Sorry. Uh, let me uh, start with uh, the weight processing part, which is uh, one of the very important and challenging part of uh, textile down processing. We all know that uh, after fiber ultimately it will go for the spinning, then weaving, then processing. And there was a study done by the four Marshall. They were the energy consultant group and energy uh, what we call is a half of world. Then in a composite textile mill having maybe 100,000 meter of production of 20 tons in terms of weight. If I calculate with the spinning, weaving and processing. So 55% of the total energy consumed by the processing. And around 30% energy consumed by the spinning and rest 15% energy consumed by the weaving department. So we can understand that what is the importance of conservation of energy in today's where, where I think from the morning, if you look at newspaper and in the evening, if you look at any kind of sports news or political news, finally you will get the term is called environment friendly, environment friendly, sustainability, energy and energy. That is now I think more articulated term in terms of domestic as well as industry everywhere. So now our uh, as a Parag has told that what is the third generation fiber? Way back 1942, the Bigla group has started to manufacture the regenerated cellulose fiber, which a futuristic approach at that time started. And today we know that Second generation, the model has come. Third generation and the viscose has come. Gradually, the greenhouse gas, the water consumption, environment pollution, or whatever we call it, is a overall impact of environment, livelihood of uh, living organisms, including human beings. The effect of hazardous chemical, etc., gradually growing down in manufacturing the third third generation fiber. And simultaneously, if you see the property, the characteristics, the requirement of uh, textile and ours are gradually increases. Now, if I compare the viscose of dry tenacity 2.2 to dry tenacity of Excel is 4.2, which is around 60 to 70% increase. And comparatively, if I'm not sure, it is maybe the 50% reduction of greenhouse gas compared to the viscose what we are today producing in the Excel. And very negligible of water we are taking 
and we are recycling all the ingredients what Parag has told you earlier. So finally, my guys, it is the most environment friendly and finest human creation of regenerated cellulose. There is no contamination. Now comes to the processing part. We all know that we like our motto is to go for the ape to ape forest to fashion. So we are not stopping into the fiber. We are approaching towards uh, different levels to give the solution of our downstream process. We all know that fibers are being processed either in the form of fi fiber form, yarn form or the fabric form. And in processing the majority of the final product processed in the fabric form. In fabric again, there are primarily two types of fabric. What is called woven fabric and needs fabric and very less amount maybe the non woven fabric. And both the fabric can be all these fabrics that uh, need so and can be processed either into the open end form or into the rope form. Now, depending on the fabric quality, whether it is a very sheer fabric or very low GSM fabric or very delicate fabric that are being processed into the rope form or what you call is a exhaust form. Or if it is there, it will be rigid fabric or it is having fabric having some amount of more uh, uh, structural stability. There mostly we go for the open end process and both need also the same way, but unfortunately the pro open end knitting processing it quite negligible compared to rope process. Next slide please. Next slide please. OK, now here I am giving you a very much prototype uh, process sequence of processing as uh, Mr. Parak rightly has told that every fiber, all positive attributes, there are some weak attributes. What we call is the adverse attributes. I don't say it is the negative attributes. It is the attributes which we have to combat with more challenge and we have to make ourselves how to redesign our process, redesign our machine or how can we reformulate our chemical uh, formulas to tackle or to prevent those effects, which is normally called is a fibrillation. This fiber has a tendency to fibrillation when it comes in the wet condition. When it uh, it is not only the wet condition, but it, when it comes in friction with some metal or other part of the machines or within the fabric friction, the surface fibers peel up and give some a what you call is a frosty effect are very small protruding fibers, which is normally called fibrils. Now this fibrils, mostly we call it is a uh, outcome or the drawback of the fiber, but uh, sometimes it is good also. If you touch these fibrils, you will get some piece skin effect also. Now to get the clean look of the fabric, better quality of the fabric, we not we normally remove this or we want, want to prevent this or we want to make some arrangement to reduce or not to further occur. These are the process how we will take care during the processing. If you take, if you see the process route that uh, in the continuous process or open with process or the rope process, in the open with process, we normally don't do any kind of defibrillation because uh, we normally take care the singeing in the initial part desizing and fabric uh, moves through open width form with a high speed. So there is a chance of contact between the metal part and the fabric in a particular time is very, very negligible. That's why chances of fibrillation is very, very low. And during pretreatment, we sometimes use a little bit of lubricant in desizing so that we can reduce the friction further. Now after this heat setting we normally do in the spandex. We all know that any thermosetting polymer if we use it, we have to heat set it. Then we have to do the chemical finish. In chemical finish, why we we use the resin? Quite mandatory in in terms of normal or the generic uh, lyocell or the bead like cell fiber, because when we will use it in our domestic, either for the apparel or the home laundry, we have to assure that it should not make any fibrils at the surface while making any kind of friction or come in contact with any material. In domestic, it, it can come with any kind of 
domestic uh, furniture also walls also even the human skin when we are wearing it and then we do normally mechanical fishing in rope form if you find that we are incorporating only one process extra which is called deep replication oblique bio polishing in rope form we all know that fabric is moving with high speed has a higher tendency to come in contact by friction and generating more friction with the metal parts of the machine and also there is a shear force going on in between the liquid and the fabric and fabric to fabric it is in the rope form so to in that case some amount of fibrillation will generate inside the process to remove that we call it is a defibrillation process now in it is the most convenient and most sustainable process is biopolis if you do it into the same bath after pre treatment no need to remove the fabric from the machine you just do little biopolishing you can remove the defibrillation rest of the process is same as before next slide please now this is all about the oven fabric now comes to the uh, knitted fabric the process is same as normal fabric only here also i have uh, just given a defibrillation process which is the biopolish process why i am giving only the biopolish process there are several other process also associated but this is the most convenient and this is the most uh, what you call sustainable process it will not create any kind of load to your etp or any kind of hazards generation in in your disposable water so next slide please now all uh, already been little bit acquainted with the what is the fibrillation how does it occur and what is the function uh, what is uh, the properties of fibrils etc here i am not going to in details just i want to show you that a picture of a blue color fabric if you see uh, very near that you will find the small white specks are there it is not specks like it is what we call is a normally called frostiness this is the frosty is like but if you go to the uh, ground in the early morning particularly in the winter or the rainy times then you will get say, say white casting on the surface of the grass and this uh, surface it is it is nothing but a protruding very small protruding fibers now this protruding fibers when it uh, reflects the light it shows it reduces the depth of the color there will you will see a little bit white is on the surface and second is that that's why you will get the color yield lower color yield apparently but if you remove the field it the, it will be darker second by gradual abrasion if you use and gradual fibrillation so there may be a reduction of the fiber diameter thereby we may reduce the mechanical properties of the fiber or we can re reduce get the less abrasion resistance and the third point is very uh, good very uh, what do you call a important point we call it is a the peeling peeling is a one of the integral part of the textile fabric we need to evaluate so these are the drawback or these are the weakness of this fiber due to fibrillation now comes to the next how to control this fibrillation during processing next slide please now it is a, no it is quite challenging that it is not it is a very straight method of processing like normal uh, viscose modal or the cotton the cotton is also quite complicated you have to do a lot of uh, high caustic treatment or in you know, in fabric you have to do masterization for better what we call is a um, uh, fabric appearance and color depth but here the challenging is that the, how you will take the process route and what kind of material is to liquor ratio you will take so that is the challenging in fabric or in the garment form and uh, second sometimes we uh, after dyeing if we find that some fibrils are there how to overcome that and already there are solutions are going on we are in bidla also it is till our under r&d that if we can make any kind of cross link uh, bidla cellular uh, bidla excel then this problem will be eliminated in the fiber stage of, uh, only but again it will take time and it is in the uh, pipeline of our r&d development next slide please the first process is the selection of process as you have seen that is my previous slide that open with form is the most favorable where 
chances of fibrillation is very very low rope form has a tendency towards fibrillation so i will always advise people that to adopt the technology which allow us to run the fabric more open with form so that we can inherently reduce the formation of fibrillation second is uh, singeing intense singeing or the removal of protruding fibers by burning at the beginning of the fabric the intense burning you will do the less fibrillation tendency will get into the subsequent processes now normally in advice in if anybody uh, if i think most of the process house they have machine is called ostoff singeing machine there is a call there are three positions so we call on fabric on roll and uh, tangential to the fabric these are the three position of singeing we always advise to go for the direct uh, uh, what is called perpendicular or the number 3 that is the position directly on fabric with a 6 to 8 mm of flame height that is the best possible removal of the protruding fiber from the fabric second as i have uh, told you little bit earlier that we add little bit lubricating agent into the continuous process also even if in the open with also and it is quite mandatory in the rope form if you go for the what you call is soft flow or jet that if you add lubrication then the friction will be less and formation of protruding fibers what you call fibrils will be much more lower now next uh, this is a very uh, uh, crude method earlier we used to do we used to deliberately make some fibrils whatever can possible into the process by adding some caustic at higher temperature then we remove it with uh, uh, some mechanical process or bio enzyme process to get the kin slash phase of the fabric next uh, next slide please now as i have told that bio polishing is the most uh, most of what is called is the environment friendly process sustainable process that we always recommend people to go for this one to remove the uh, fibrils what we call the deep fibrillation process if it ha it be generates in your process line now after this defibrillation and processing when the fabric come out if you go for the finishing and i hope that you will use in the, the garmenting and then sometimes garment also rewashed because different end use now there are two three methods we apply it the the fast and force most simple method that if you can use some resin or the cross linking agent at the time of finishing and most of the regenerated fiber we always advise to use this chemical resin not very high amount of resin like wrinkle free or uh, what do you call is a the depurating 3.5 like that it is a normal average resin normally 40 to 45 gpl is enough to prevent further generation of fibrils in, in domestic use or any home laundering process and uh, another process is called normally people use that acrylic binder or the acrylic copolymer like binder in printing somebody may use in pigment dyeing those who do pigment dyeing they use lot of binder to 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 bind the pigment with the fabric they are this pigment sorry binder itself acts as a prevention of fibrillation and the third is what you call is if you do is very simple it is called mechanical process for short term if you use very one to one or two times or three times there if you use, you go sing, simple calendaring or sanforizing with higher pressure or compacting with higher pressure you will get the clean surface and thereby it will allow you for some consecutive operations without fibrillation but it is not permanent next slide please now there are another uh, process this is uh, the i have written in the last but it is uh, it could have been written in the first because at the initial stage way back long when this uh, lysel fiber came to the market the people used to do this arrow drying or arrow trumbling method to fibrillate and then do the bio polishing to defibrillate but nowadays it is getting obsolete because it's a cost in person again it's a another uh, what we call is a separate process in the final next slide please now it is a, here i am giving you some of the what is called ready solution if you want to use in your process 
the first stage i have told that singing then uh, second is one uh, precaution if you take into the process that which is speed is fabric flow speed if you go for the rope rope form try to keep the fabric flow rate as low as possible what is workable it is not too low then your production productivity will be lost but not too fast second is uh, you use little bit lubricating agent that i have told that 2 to 3 grams per liter this type of lubricating agent and we use some uh, as uh, this fiber may not require the bleaching or the peroxide bleaching but still we advise that mild bleaching with little bit of caustic treatment give you better for future and last is the enzymatic so these are the uh, what do you call is a very uh, low hanging tips to take care during processing if you uh, want to get the same technology or same process how set up what you have you want to run this fabric next slide please now i just want to uh, give you an example that uh, to be honest that we all know that textile machinery has been designed for long time based on the maximum fiber used in industry initially most of the machinery being produced based on the wool and silk which was the most primitive fiber later on the technologies has uh, started to develop for the cotton and uh, during 60s and 8 60s and 70s of this 19th century people started manufacturing of machine for polyester we know that all roid reduction etc this is the same process but in different name okay how to control the shrinkage how to control the diameter how to make the better appearance and feel etc but no such innovation in technology happens in terms of when in terms of processing of or controlling the problem of regenerated cellulose now this is a company uh, this company is very renowned you, you all know that they beyond kalani it is called they come out with a good solution i am just uh, putting into uh, i am giving you the reference because this is the first kind of company who has started some thought how to regenerate the technology or how to regenerate the machine re, sorry uh, refurbish the machine so that it can be best fit for your fabric but every fabric every fiber had its unique property so they are this machine is where you can go directly defibrillation uh, sorry fibrillation and defibrillation in one passage either before drying or after drying as you require required so this is what is a unique uh, technology i am i hope that there are more technology will come into the process uh, this is all about the textile processing and in finally i will tell that this fiber is the next uh, generation fiber it is not third generation fiber we call it is it is also a future future generation fiber for decades to come so lot of uh, processing are going on we have established in the fabric in the continuous method it is a very successfully running in bed linen segment and also very successfully running in apparels with cotton blend or the polyester blend and uh, quite extensively into the market and everywhere getting a escalation of percentage into the market because of its feel by bi biodegradability and also more of that this is what the fiber we can get regenerated with better property then the viscos and the model thank you very much for kind uh, your time and patience over to devasis uh thank you friends uh, uh, it's uh, good to see such a huge participation from the fraternity my sincere thanks to mr alakan uh, i'm seeing a lot of questions has come it shows the interest it shows the keenness to adhere to birla excel uh thank you i must mention you very uh, specifically here and uh, so now uh, we have got a plethora of questions there are approximately more than 50 questions we have found so uh, it is very difficult to go for individual question within short span of time we have 3 minutes left with your permission we would like to like to go forward with the questions and uh, 15 more minutes we would like to extend this program 
So participants and attendees who are there, kindly be with us. There are a lot of uh, participation from our neighboring countries in the same time zone. And thank you all for being here with us. Uh, <clears throat> majority of the questions <clears throat> coming from a various, uh, mainly four or five buckets. So I would like to cover uh, some areas uh, from where the questions are belonging, but for the specific questions, there may be six, seven specific questions for the paucity of time. I will take the questions um, that six, seven questions specifically, but majority of the questions are from a bucket and uh, those in a bucket form. I'm just answering to that. First of all, <clears throat> yes. Build our cellulose is continuously uh, striving and working with the brands uh, for brand build building activities and uh, slowly we are getting into inroads. So now there are a lot of brands. They are uh, also asking specifically for build Excel fiber. Uh, I'm uh, for uh, obvious reason. I'm not mentioning any specific brands, but uh, there are uh, ample examples. Number one on the brand building on the <clears throat> on the. Sustainability front, it is the most sustainable fiber. Man-made cellulose fiber, which is available with cotton. Somebody has asked this question that what is the difference in terms of sustainability? There is no comparison with cotton. Cotton is not at all a sustainable fiber. If we if you think the kind of water consumption cotton needs to from the right from the sowing of the cotton seed to a plantation to harvesting ginning and then uh, it's yarn and fiber a fabric and everything there is no comparison so uh, first of all in terms of sustainability it scores out excel scores out much much better than cotton somebody has questioned that whether <clears throat> why it is not used for next to skin see uh, for next to skin, there is an, another solution called modal. Modal, the, there's a difference in the feel in between modal and the Excel fabric. So modal fabric is given a very soft and silky kind of uh, appearance and uh, feel. So that's why <clears throat> it is more used in terms of garments, which is next to skin. Yes, it is possible to produce uh, trousers out of uh, Birla Excel. We have done that. And uh, there are a lot of uh, a lot of uh, fabric uh, we have produced in our application development center. I would request all of you to please visit our website and to connect with your uh, manager. Uh, there are uh, in India, you know, all our managers. Uh, Mr. Arifur Rahman Talukdar is there at uh, Bangladesh. Uh, we have presence in Indonesia. Uh, Mr. Ashwin Ladha, uh, Mr. Ritesh Dhar, they are there. You please connect to them and they will they will at least connect to you with the right kind of merchandise and the technical uh, solutions. So and uh, so this is about how you can get through anti-fibril, uh, anti-fibril, uh, you know, uh, build us uh, cellulose is already working into that, and uh, Dr. Parag Patil is leading that endeavor. Very shortly, we will commercially launch. Certainly, uh, we are there uh, due to certain strat strategic reasons. Uh, we have not launched it so far, and we are oversold with our this fiber itself. So uh, we are uh, building up some capacity, and then we will certainly do it at the right time. So this is the more or less uh, the kind of uh, normal questions uh, I have bucketed it in different form for uh, Somesh and for uh, Dr. Patil. The specific questions now uh, let me take it and uh, from our background colleagues who are actually switching the live. So but two, uh, four or five questions let me take it and from there we will uh, go through um, we will come to a conclusion of this session so uh, somebody has asked this question that since crystalline region is more in lyocell compared to viscose will the dye uptake of excel is less than viscose uh, i would uh, like to request uh, dr parag patil to answer this question uh, it's a very very good question and in fact that would be let's say the first uh, 
salt that anybody would think because of uh, higher crystalline region uh, it, the dioptic is uh, should be lower diacyl but in contrast it is not diacyl has actually a better dioptic than uh, viscose and one of the reasons that we feel for this is this presence of very highly crystalline a uh, very highly fibrillar microstructure and the unique moisture absorption or water absorption uh, that anything that comes on the surface gets very quickly dispersed into the bulk of the matrix of the lysol fiber. Yeah, so there is an um, anonymous um, question that's come to this chat box. In the, are small fibrils responsible for capillary action for moisture transfer or also responsible for high dye take up in Excel? So there was an answer to this chat box also from one of the attendees. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> Somebody has, uh, Mr. Alakan uh, has asked, uh, what's the kind of cross-linking agent advocated to use in fabric single jersey weft knitted of Excel labs? Well, it's a fabric question, so better so much to answer. Uh, it's a very uh, common right now because uh, the cross-linking agents uh, now is a market. There is a dilemma whether I should go low formaldehyde, zero formaldehyde, or normal DMD to generic uh, cross linker. Now, uh, it does not matter that uh, what type of cross linking agent we are using. It matters that uh, whether we are using the uh, cross linking agents in a proper uh, sequence or not. Uh, I will recommend you can use any kind of cross linking agent. Nowadays, uh, I always recommend for the sake of sustainability, it is better if you use that. Uh, free for formaldehyde free cross linking agent otherwise any cross linking agent with limited uh, uh, formaldehyde release like dmdhu base we normally use in the industry dmdheu base cross linking agent is suitable uh Next question uh, I would like to take that there are some couple of questions that yes it is of course it is uh, possible to blend with cotton uh, to our experience that 20 to 30 percent blending with cotton is uh, quite all right even to run in normal process we don't face any difficulty the tenacity is build like cell fiber strength uh, grams per denier I have a report of grams per denier right now in my hand it is about 4 to 4.1 grams per denier <coughs> uh, yeah. Mr. Alakan, there was a lot of questions from you. One question that you have told that is it the greatest drawback, the fibrillation, is it the greatest drawback? To me, it is the greatest beauty of this fiber. You know, and when you are encountering this challenge, how to uh, how to leverage this fibrillation effect, the effect that comes in the fabric, it cannot be possible to get by using any chemical in any other fabric or any kind of mechanism in any other fabric. So rather than a drawback, I would like to take it as a beauty of this particular fiber. Uh, that is my personal view, of course. Uh, but if properly processed, if proper uh, processing technology is there, some beautiful fabric can come out of uh, build like cell fiber and live cell fiber in a whole. Uh, so, um, yes, there is a very specific question from engineer Muhammad Aminul Islam uh, that is in single 30s, GG grade uh, 28, 150 GSM. Do you have uh, technology to control shrinkage within 5% confidently in fabric and garments by line dry and tumble dry? Question for Somesh. It is a, it's a neat fabric. It's a neat fabric. Okay. Uh, in proper condition, it is yes, but still now I got maximum of 6%. But 5 to 6% it is maximum. OK, I got it. So uh, just one one thing uh, there was I just like to continue because I got some uh, thing from Alakan uh, some of the question. It is very uh, good uh, because uh, sometimes people has uh, some confusion that whether this uh, singing process is uh, done normally in the beginning and Alakan thought that uh, he he said that he some of sometimes that fibrillation comes in the dying then what to do that we will do the singing after that uh, I have uh, I have written in the process that uh, we normally do that uh, defibrillation before dying so when you will do pretreatment with caustic and then defibrillation 
properly, then chances of fibrillation in the dying reduces. Why? I am telling you. First of all, we are using the caustic amount for fibrillation quite similar or little higher than in dying. Thereby, we are blocking the possibility of fibrillation in the dying is less. Number one. Number two, we are keeping temperature 95 degree in, in fibrillation, wherein in dying we normally keep it is if it is the normal dying with 50 to 60 degree temperature. So chances of further fibrillation in the dying is very, very less. And if in any case it happens, then what you will do? I will always advise that you can do mild biopolishing after dying. Mild with neutral enzyme that may not change your said or the color day. So these are the solution we can uh, think about this processing. Thank you. And somebody also asked the what type of enzyme with the biopolis normal biopolis enzyme which normally used in cotton but with uh, better effectivity is recommended one question from mr bikrant what is the weight loss in biofinish so much uh, still it is uh, uh, not uh, counted properly but uh, in uh, in experience or technically i will say it is similar to cotton Maybe 1% or 1.5% maximum. Uh, Muhammad, uh, Shariful Islam, uh, we of course expect more sustainable fiber. <laughs> yes, Mr. Shariful Islam, uh, I have uh, to announce here that uh, Billa Cellulose has a beautiful fiber called Liva Reviva, which is uh, produced from, uh, you know, uh, our, uh, it's a recycled product. Basically, it is from, uh, pre-consumer garment stage uh, textile waste we are producing. Uh, so the brand name is Liva Reviva. You can uh, reach to our country manager or to our website for further uh, documentation and for further information in it. Uh, Mr. Uh, Engineer Muhammad Aminul Islam, your question is that which type and percentage of enzyme is suitable for Excel? We believe not to do any enzymatic process on viscose modal lyocell. Question for Somesh. And another question I will take uh, with this, uh, that is, uh, what is the weight loss in biofinish? This is the question from Vikrant. Yeah, I think I have uh, covered this answer just uh, uh, right now, just before that. Uh, it is simple that uh, biopolicing enzyme uh, what we normally use in textile, but yes, it will be more refined and little more activity than normal enzyme what we normally use in cotton. It is normally called biocellulase enzyme. Normally the genetic name we use it. And if you can use uh, the good uh, enzyme available into the market. Now look, people ask me whether it is an acid enzyme or neutral enzyme. Now if you do before dyeing, or before processing, I always advise the acidic enzyme. And if you want to do something after finish, oh, sorry, after coloration, it is neutral enzyme. Question from Muhammad uh, Shariful Islam, that is how you are convincing the mother buyers to increase the demands for Builder Excel? Because most of the garment owners made garments on the basis of buyers demand and fabric specification. Uh, let me answer this question, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Shariful. Uh, see, it is the market force. Ultimately, you know, everybody had to fall in place for a sustainable solution in their lifestyle. So, <clears throat> you know, it is the sustainable fiber which will be last one standing out. And, uh, you know, slowly we are finding in European unions, in America, in first world countries, how much they are demanding uh, for all these sustainable products in some other product category apart from garments. Let, let us say some hygiene category products. We have seen how they are more and more into cellulosic fiber. So earlier the products that have been made from uh, synthetic products, synthetic fibers. So all these things we are facing, we are uh, looking at, uh, when we are seeing that we are finding that they are shifting towards cellulosic fiber due to the sustainable reasons only. So uh, 
we are pretty sure we are pretty hopeful that this kind of shift will happen today or tomorrow but to accelerate that builda cellulose has a has a vertical itself who are always working hand in hand with the world's largest greatest and renowned brands and we are seeing we are seeing the effect we are seeing the uh, their demands are increasing uh, and currently we are at a very good position uh, to sell our product uh, as i have told that our products are liked by the people and in various category like from builda excel is being used from denim in the course count category to the finest of the uh, usage in 80s and 100s crown for uh, sheeting products so there's a lot of interest lot of questions uh, it is uh, cotton and uh, mr cordela uh, cotton and excel are cellulosic what is the method followed for finding blend yeah stomish ji uh, would you like to take this question please how to get the blend percentage how to arrive at a blend percentage uh, chemically from a blend of cotton and excel yeah it's a uh, quite a popular question and interesting question because both are same uh, family fiber and uh, some uh, fiber dissolves in the, and there is a very thin layer uh, a difference to dissolve the fiber in the concentrated acid solution in our tra dc after uh, many experiments from long time in chemical we made some correction factor that uh, if you take 59% sulfuric acid then viscous should or the regenerate should dissolve the cotton should not but again nobody can guarantee that how much uh, uh, there will be no kind of cotton will be dissolved there there will be a very stress amount of cotton also will be dissolved so we like to try uh, the blend separation that's why for uh, give you the guarantee to the customer that we do both way in uh, mechanical separation then optical view as well as the chemical and in chemical in uh, normal acidic media we add some correction factor so that is how we calculate in our lab and in the uh, third party lab like uh, others international they also follow nearly the same method um i just forgot to mention one question that is uh, um, about uh, tenacity strength transfer efficiency uh strength transfer efficiency has a uh, has a different nuances so i am not going to use that word but uh, for uh, your um, just for an information in 80s count uh it is possible to get an rkm uh, to the tune of 27 80s count from build excel fiber and uh, in utj it can go as high as 29 rk in 80 count uh, so uh, we have covered most of the questions some may remain uh, unanswered due to paucity of time uh, this is the time we have to conclude this session and uh, again my sincere thanks to this coveted uh, speakers and this august gathering uh, to make this successful very interesting very exchanging uh and slow shortly we will come back to you with more such exciting program we are we will try to catch you up in uh, every quarter at least once and uh, in our next session we are going to again uh, come up with an with our uh, a very interesting work that we have done in uh, vortex and air jet technology with our dyed fiber with one of the greatest manufacturer of machines textile machines so we hope uh, that will also be equally exciting and thank you very much all the attendees thank you very much for being here uh, dr parag patil mr shomesh bhobik uh, no appreciation can be enough for making this uh, program uh, so successful without you it was just not possible thank you very much Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.